Welcome back to the Foundations course in our No Man Left Behind self-paced training. I'm David Delk, the president of Man in the Mirror, and I'm here with Charles Cooper, uh, pastor of the Vine Church, Brett Klimmer, our vice president, and Pat Morley, founder and CEO. In the last session, we looked at why it's so important that we create uh, discipleship as an intentional process for men in our churches. And we also introduced you to the No Man Left Behind model, a system perfectly designed uh, to produce male disciples. In this session, we're going to be looking at the five types of men and how that helps us to understand the men that we're trying to reach and how we can actually reach them. So guys, I'd like to ask you a question about what you've seen in churches. How have you seen churches make decisions about the kinds of ministries or activities that they offer to men? Well, I, I like to start off by talking about the negative side, which usually is tradition. We've always mm. done it this way, or this is all we've ever done, or someone from the top told us to do it this way with no real understanding about what's going on actually in the context of my particular local church. Hmm, that's a good one, Charles. I, I also think a lot of churches, not all churches, but a lot of churches kind of have a, a one-size-fits-all mentality. So maybe the, the passion of the pastor or the, the seller, uh, session or the elder or deacon group is, uh, say, evangelism. And so there, there's a great amount of effort that goes into that, and other important areas are neglected, like mm -hmm. service in the community or discipleship. And so uh, we would like to say at Man in the Mirror that, that, that we think evangelism without discipleship is cruel. Mm. So you need to have somebody working in every corner of the vineyard. Mm. You know, I see that even my, I'm tempted sometimes. I want to plan stuff that I want to do. And so I talk to leaders all the time that, that well, I'll, I want to do this, so let's do that. I want to do that, so let's do that. Which, which isn't all bad because I'm a guy. I'm, I'm not that atypical. But I'm not like every guy in the church. Some guys are, like Pat said, some guys are more interested in different spiritual areas. Some guys are athletic. Some guys are more introspective. And so you really need to look at the types of men that you have, where, they, where they're at, so that you can, you know, not do what you want to do, but do what the guys will enjoy doing. Yeah, that's a great wow. point. All those are great. I mean, just the idea of, of not just doing the things that as, we as leaders would enjoy, but really being intentional about understanding our men, where they are, who they are, mm. what they need, and then how we can provide that for them. So let's go back to our session now. Brett Klemmer is going to talk with us about the five types of men and how that helps us understand and organize our discipleship process for men in our church. Well, welcome back. We're here for session two of the Foundations course in the No Man Left Behind self-paced training. Uh, it's great to be with you. In the, in the last session, you'll remember that we sort of gave you an introduction to the No Man Left Behind model, talked, talked about making a case for men's discipleship, looked at some of the, of the statistics. In this session, we're going to begin looking at the actual men that you have in your church. How do we look at those men? How do we reach those men effectively based on where they are spiritually? And so go ahead and turn in your uh, manuals to session two, the five types of men and how to reach them. Probably in this room right now, there's somebody that's involved in sales and marketing. Any, anybody involved in sales or marketing? Okay. So when you're trying to reach a customer, if you're in sales or if you're in marketing, what is uh, the first question that you would ask when you're trying to reach somebody with a marketing message? What's your target? What's your target, right? You're, you're looking at your target market. You're thinking about the kind of customer that you're trying to reach, the kind of product that you have. And you're, going to, and you're going to meet the needs of your target customer. So you're going to figure out where your target customer is at, what their needs are, and then you're going to shape your, either your marketing message or your sales presentation to who that person is. Does that make sense? So as we look at our men's discipleship efforts in the church, we want to do the same thing. We want to figure out where our guys are at so that we can shape and craft our message to reach them in the language and uh, meeting, meeting the needs that they have as opposed to maybe the needs that that I feel like they should have. Does that make sense? So when we're trying to figure out how to reach the men of our church, we're going we're gonna to categorize our men. We're going to figure out where they're at spiritually. And to do this, we've created a taxonomy or a, just a way of, of putting men into categories. And we've developed these five categories for, for men. Now, you can put men in categories all different kinds of ways. You might do it by life stages. You might do it by age. You might do it by, you know, all of our dads, all of our dads of teenagers, all of our retired People, you, you can put men into categories lots of different ways. 
The way that we have found to be most effective is to put them into categories by where they are on their spiritual journey. And so let's look at five types of men from the No Man Left Behind model that help us categorize our men according to where they are on their spiritual journey. The first category of men are these men who need Christ. A man who needs Christ is, is probably not even in your church. He's, a, he's a, a fellow employee of a guy in your church. He might play on your softball team. He might come to an outreach event that you do, maybe a carnival. Or, or maybe he's the dad of a kid that's in your preschool program, if you have one of those. Or a husband of a mom that's in mops. All these different guys, they're, they're very much peripherally attached to your church. But they are an opportunity for you to reach those, those men. And so the first type of men that we have are men who need Christ. The second category of men we have are what we call cultural Christians. These are men, as we said in the last session, who are either just inside or just outside of the church. They're on, they're, they're on the outside looking in. They're probably coming to church very regularly, like once a month, really regularly, you know? Um, and so they're, they're there, you see them, you probably recognize them. They probably come to the more fun activities uh, that you have uh, in your church. But they're not, they're not committed to spiritual growth. When you look at a guy like this, you, just, you know he's not committed to spiritual growth. Now, there is one kind of cultural Christian that's hyper-involved, and these are the guys that sort of use their religiosity to keep you at arm's length. Have you ever met a guy like this? So he's on the committees, he's at every activity, he's, he's always doing stuff. But as soon as you ask him a question that goes beyond the surface level, as soon as you get a question that sort of goes beyond that, how you doing? What do guys say? Fine, right? As soon as you try to go beyond that, he sort of, sort of emotionally takes a step back from it. He won't let you get inside the veneer. And so that guy's probably a cultural Christian as well. Then the third type of guy that we have are what we call biblical Christians. And a biblical Christian, quite simply, is a man who is committed to intentionally growing in his faith. He wants to know the Bible better. He wants to know God better. He wants to be in fellowship with other Christian men so that he can know Christ better and begin to make him known to, to those around him. We call those guys biblical Christians. And then the fourth group of man that we have are leaders. Now I want to redefine leader a little bit for you. Typically what we think of as a leader is a guy that's doing this, who's standing up in front of a group and leading something. But you know, a leader is really any man who's as concerned for other people's spiritual growth as he is for his own. He's outwardly, outwardly focused. And then the fourth type of man that we have are men who are hurting. And you know, you might be shocked to, th to, to realize this, but probably in your churches today, as many as half of your men at any given time are hurting. A hurting man can be in one of these other four categories as well, but the sort of the predominant characteristics that he's going through at the moment is, is some kind of crisis. Maybe it's a job crisis, a lot, a lot of that going on uh, in, with our guys. It may be a health crisis, it may be a relationship crisis, maybe with his spouse or with his kids or with his parents. You know, a lot of guys are dealing with aging parent issues. And so at any given time in your church, about half of your men are hurting. So if we know these five categories, if we know where our guys are at, then we can start to meet them with the gospel based on where they're at spiritually. So in other words, you don't talk to a man who's a biblical Christian about Jesus the same way as you would talk to a man who needs Christ about Jesus. They're not going to have the same, uh, the same basic uh, uh, knowledge and, and preparation to hear what you have to say. So let, let's, I'm going to use the flip chart over here. We're going to look at a few interesting things about these guys. So what, the first category was men who need Christ. And one of the interesting things about a guy that needs Christ is what his focus is. So the focus for a guy who needs Christ is probably himself. He's focused on me. Okay? The next, and, so, and so his focus is very internal, uh, focused on himself, very internal. The next guy is what we call the cultural Christian. And his focus is going to be internal too, but he's involved in church, so maybe he's beginning to look a little bit outside of himself. So his focus is me and what God can do for me, right? Does that make sense? So I'm going to get involved in church because, well, I can make connections in church. I can get my kids involved in moral and religious instruction in church. My wife wants me to go to church, and so she'll be happier with me. So it's sort of me and God, but, but me is first, okay? The third category of men we have are biblical Christians. 
And a biblical Christian now is not focused on himself first. He's really focused on God first and himself. But now it's more, how can I grow closer to God? What do I need to know about God? And so he'll focus first on God, and then he'll focus on how he can have a deeper relationship with God. And then finally, we have these leaders of these first four types, a leader. And a leader's focus is very outwardly uh, oriented. He's focused on God and others. God and others. So what's in it for me? What can God do for me? Well, maybe how can I grow closer to God and grow as a, as a Christian? And now how can I help, help other, people's, uh, other people focus and learn and grow in their own faith? And then finally, we had this hurting, this hurting guy again. And, you know, depending on where he is in this continuum is going to be how he faces that crisis. Does that make sense? So a guy who's a, who's a leader or a biblical Christian, he's probably more oriented towards how am I going to grow through this experience versus a guy that's hurting and is in the neat Christ or cultural Christian, he's probably a little bit more like, why is this happening to me? And so we want to meet those guys at the point of their need. You know, a concept we often talk with leadership teams about in local churches is a concept that we like to call belong, believe, behave. You know, when a guy uh, comes into the church, too often what we say to him is, look, you need to look a certain way, you need to act a certain way, you need to talk a certain way. And, and we might not even say it explicitly, we, it just may be implied. Guys are good at this. They sort of look around and see what the other guys are doing and saying, and so they begin to emulate that. And sometimes we can give guys the message that we think that if you behave like us for long enough, eventually you will believe what we believe. And once we've decided that you, that you are behaving correctly and believing correctly, then you get to belong to our group. Then you're in. Well, you know what? That's really not the way Jesus did it. If you look at the way that Jesus recruited his disciples, he had a bunch of people following him around. He let them be part of his group so that they could see what he was all about and decide if they wanted to believe in him or not. And I think that's the right way to do it in the local church, too. When a guy starts to express interest in spiritual things, we need to not focus on his behavior right off the bat. Instead, what we need to do is we need to say to him, hey, come be a part of our group. Come hang out with us. Come be in relationship with us. Because the best way for a man to find Christ is to see it exhibited in the lives of other men. So bring a guy in. Tell him that he belongs. Give him that sense of being a part of a group. What's going to happen is because he's around guys like you, He's going to slowly begin to learn what you believe, and he's going to come to a point where he's going to make a decision whether he wants to believe that or not. Once a guy's been around for a while, and then he comes and he makes a profession of faith, you know, then his heart's going to start to change, and then his behavior will change based on, on his heart, based on his belief system. So you never really have to get on a guy about his behavior. You'll let the Holy Spirit do that as he gives his heart to Christ because he's been around guys like you who know God, who love Christ, who want to follow Christ. Belong, believe, behave. It's important that we keep that in the right order as we minister to and reach men. Here's another interesting thing. We talked last session about some of these statistics. Do you remember we talked about 113 million men in America and 69 million make no profession of faith in Christ at all? So that means that, uh, that if we look at these numbers, that we have, we have 113 million, 69 are in our needs Christ category, which leaves, if you do the math, it leaves about 44 million. And so we said that one in 18 million men or about six million are involved in discipleship. So those are our guys who are biblical Christians. And then our cultural Christians then are the rest. So just doing the math really easily, 69 million men need Christ, 38 million men are, um, are uh, not involved in discipleship, although they are saying that they're Christians. Six million men are involved in discipleship. And then if we said maybe 10% of those guys were leaders, that would give us about, about 0.6. And so it adds up. So the interesting thing is, though, that if you look at these numbers and if you were to graph them, obviously you'd have a big, big numbers at the beginning and going down in our culture. But if you looked in our churches, what would you see? Probably the, the opposite, right? And if you looked at our programs for men, at the activities and opportunities that we offer for men, you'd really see... A flip. You'd see most of the programs are oriented more towards guys who are biblical Christians and leaders and much less uh, uh, activities and programs oriented towards guys who are in need of Christ or who are, who are cultural Christians.
All right. So that leads us to that leads us to the activity that we have. We're going to look at these types of men, and we really want you to take some time to look at the at your own men in your church. And so, uh, so we're going to we're going to look at our men in our church. We're going to come up with the five types of men and begin to think about the guys in your church. What percentage breakdown do you feel like you have of guys in your church? You have 20% men sort of involved on the real periphery as men who need Christ, and 30% of guys are cultural Christians. Whatever, whatever those numbers break down to, talk to the guys that you're with from your church and start to think about, okay, how does this breakdown look in my church? And then we're going to start to think about what activities we have uh, for men in each of these areas. But, but at the very beginning, what we really want you to do is you're going to take this sheet, this big 11 by 17 sheet that you have. You've got the types of men across the top. You're going to begin to think about who are some of the guys that fit into each of these categories. You can actually, I would encourage you to write some names down, or if you're worried about them seeing it, write just initials down about uh, guys that fit into each of these categories. And then begin to think about how are these guys connected to our church? How, where can we go and find these guys in our church? At the end of session two in your foundation workbook, you'll find some questions for discussion and application. Spend some time talking about those questions with the members of your team. Then you're going to move to the application section and begin working on your ministry audit. This is a very important document. It spans two pages there in your workbook. And as you work through this, we're asking you to put down some specific initials or names of some of the men and how they are connected to your church. This is incredibly important because it makes everything very concrete. So for example, you might say TS, Tom Stevens, uh, plays on our softball team. Or John Thompson, uh, his kids come to our preschool. But the idea is to get very concrete about how men are actually connecting into the life and ministry of your church. This becomes the data that you're going to use later as you try to build the seamless discipleship process for men. <music>